right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from rather cloudy San Diego today. After our heat wave of the last few days, it's more than welcome. And I'm joined by Eric Ressler, who is up in Santa Cruz, California. Did you have, did you have the heat wave too? Yeah, we absolutely did. And we've been having a bunch of wildfires also. So it's been a, a wild ride, but pretty par for the course for 2020, I'd say. Um, I would say so. In fact, today it actually looked like it might even rain, which is kind of bizarre, but we'd be good for, good for the wildfires. Um, okay, so Eric is the creative, um, he's the creative director, founder and creative director of Design by Cosmic. And, uh, and today what we want to uh, talk about is how to build brand awareness and engagement with your brand, but particularly by using it as uh, the, the angles of change, change uh, and movement building and change awareness and all of those things. So Eric, why today is it important for brands uh, to look at, at, at a, a more broader kind of altruistic approach to the market that maybe once upon a time they would have bothered with? Yeah, well, I think there's really a lot of different reasons. The most practical reason is that the next generation of consumers are much more purposeful and aware of their power as consumers. And they're looking to support brands that have a broader or greater purpose outside of just providing a good product, but also creating a positive social impact. And so most, you know, pragmatically, that's one really good reason if you're a brand to be considering that. Um, I would personally argue, and I think a lot of other people would argue that we're in a very interesting time and uh, making sure that we're doing things in, in a socially and environmentally responsible way is critical um, for the future of our planet, quite literally. And beyond that, um, just because we have an opportunity right now to make a fundamental change for a world that works better for more of us instead of a world that uh, is really kind of a split between the have and the have nots. So, I mean, in order to, it's not something that you can just do overnight in terms of like just change your messaging and everything, because let's face it, there has to be some level of authenticity behind it, because if that's not who you are as a company, it's going to look very superficial very quickly, right? Absolutely. I mean, I think, and, and we see this all the time, we use a term for this called cause marketing, um, where essentially you see organizations that that really don't exist for any kind of social good, essentially trying to leverage um, some kind of cause or some kind of you know good social message as a way to attract customers. But it's quite easy to tell which brands are authentic about it and which brands are not authentic. And so you'll see pushback um, and bad PR um, from brands that are essentially just trying to do this to earn more profits at the end of the day. So certainly that's not at all what, you know, we would suggest to our clients, um, you know, at Cosmic, we work exclusively with social impact organizations. And so one of our questions when we first interview a client or, or start to meet a client is to just kind of dig into, you know, is your cause or your, your impact core to your DNA? Did you found your organization to do this? Um, and, and if you didn't, are you authentically working towards trying to create change um, outside of just your bottom line. Mm -hmm. And and that kind of change or that cause or mission, I mean, there's different degrees of it, right? It doesn't all have to be like earth shattering in a, on a global scale. It can be quite localized too, correct? Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think in the social imp impact space, there's a lot of conversation around, um, you know, systems change, essentially trying to create the systems that are responsible for, you know, any of the injustices in the world. And, and that's certainly important. But there's nothing wrong with something that's more regional or something that's more direct relief. You know, a very common example is the issue of homelessness, right? Mm -hmm. um, homeless people need to eat, they need a place to live, they need a sense of security and safety. And um, we can't just put all of the relief on pause and try and fix the structures that create homelessness in the first place, because, you know, what about the people who are homeless right now? So the impact space is, you know, it's messy, it's tangled. There's a lot of different places that um, people are, are finding different ways to play within this kind of larger impact ecosystem and figuring out what your niche is, is really, I think, the start to building a strong brand and making true progress. Yeah. And I also think there's something a little more honest about it. And because it, it, in, in many cases, uh, you know, if you're not a large company or whatever, you can make you can make greater impact on a community level than you're ever going to make on a global level. And sometimes it seems like it's much easier to pay lip service 
as I always say, it's much easier to sit around your backyard having a few beers and talk about all the structural problems in the world. It's a lot harder to get up off your butt and walk down the street and help somebody. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. And I think, you know, both are important. Um, there's nothing to say that you shouldn't start with something that you can have a direct impact on. But also, I think as a sector, this concept of collective impact, where maybe your organization alone can't make that structural change. But if you start to partner up with other organizations that have shared values or are working on the same issues, then all of a sudden you have a lot more sway and a lot more influence in the sector around the issue that you're working to solve. So yeah, I think having a bias towards action over like over intellectualization of the topic is certainly the right way to think about it. Um, and there are issues where systems change is really the only way that the change is going to happen. Um, when you look at something like global climate change, a regional approach just isn't going to get us there, right? So it needs to be systems level. But generally speaking, yeah, I, I think um, having a bias towards action and figuring out what's the real world impact that you can make now is a really good place to start. And then how do you, and when you work with organizations, and that, how, how does an organization be careful that, uh, it doesn't it doesn't go too far right where where this becomes like um, you know this becomes everything and you know whatever their core product or or service or whatever they're doing kind of falls into second place and they kind of lose you know everything goes out of balance because there's also a danger towards that as well. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you're speaking towards um, kind of market based businesses right mm -hmm. who are profit driven sure. who are selling a product or a service and. Um, you know, in the case of, of nonprofits, that is their product, right? No, no, Impact I is their that. product, right? But with regards to social enterprise, um, you know, uh, there's there's really you can't have a good cause and a bad product if you're doing a B2C brand, um, and so it's really tough to do both well. And I think that's the 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 balance that these organizations need to find. And there's a number of, of use cases or examples where companies have been able to achieve that and to a synergistic benefit. Um, you look at companies like Patagonia or Allbirds, mm -hmm. where without their authentic social mission and impact, their product is not as valuable and their coalition of you know supporters is not as broad or as strong. So getting both right is certainly difficult, um, but I think that that's the that's the balance right is you need to make a good product or have a very good service that has value in and of itself and then on top of that can you build in an authentic mission that you're working towards that is logical that isn't you know totally off the cuff or disconnected mm -hmm. from your service or your product but that extends it and makes it even more beneficial to society I guess one of the other challenges that you probably face sometimes in working particularly with your social oriented um, and non -for not for profits and that is is um, broadening the message right to be more inclusive to more people because sometimes especially when people are shall we say very enthusiastic about their mission they can forget that part of their job is to maybe persuade people who are skeptical therefore your message needs to be a broader message and maybe you need to temper it at times. Yeah, I mean, that's so case dependent. Um, we definitely work with certain clients who know their audience and speak to them and try and mobilize and activate people who believe in their values and share their vision and people who don't that's not for them and, and they're not trying to persuade. Um, other times it totally makes sense to persuade. I think what we see is it's really case dependent, but what's more effective often than trying to convert people into establishing a new belief that's aligned with your beliefs is to just try and find more people who either already are aligned with that or maybe undecided or open and converting them and inspiring them to take action, whether that's buying a product or volunteering or donating or you know, writing a letter to your representative or whatever that might be. So it's really case dependent, so it's hard to generalize, but um, I think what's most common actually, more so than the, than the message not being too, uh, than the message being kind of too specific or limiting is the message being too insider baseball, right? Especially mm -hmm. in the nonprofit world, right. where how can you make your message compelling and timely and emotional and impactful and inspiring in a way that gets people to sit up straight and pay attention. I think one of the things that we spend a lot of time thinking about is this concept of the attention economy in that because of the power of the internet and our globally connected culture, you know, we can spread messages globally 
at the you know the click of a button, but how do you actually get people to pay attention and listen? And it starts by having a compelling idea to share or a compelling story to tell. But beyond that, you have to create content and uh, experiences that are scroll stopping that will people that people can see and that will capture their attention and you know get them engaged. And so I think that's really co more commonly the issue that we see with our clients versus the message being too niche. Um, in certain ways, we almost want the message to be niche, but it needs to be targeted towards the right people. Yeah, that's a good point that you bring up there because um, th there's, uh, you know, cause fatigue, obviously, can set in very quickly. And as you yeah. say, it's very easy to get your message out. So there's all of these people competing for, for your attention. And when you get that, you, you, it creates a lot of noise. And when, when there's a lot of noise, people tend to shut down a bit. And, and so, um, so how do you help people stand out among the noise and also kind of overcome that cause fatigue, which, which you can set in? Yeah, totally. So to speak to the cause fatigue side of this, I, I think it really does come back to having an authentic cause that you believe in truly. Because I think a lot of the cause fatigue falls under the broad category of just kind of cause marketing or corporate social responsibility. Mm -hmm. I think people can sniff that out and, and there's nothing specifically wrong with, with corporate social responsibility. I would argue that, that, you know, cause marketing is, is inherently a little deceitful. Um, but I, I think it really starts by having that authentic connection to an issue that's important to people um, that matters, especially in the context of all the other issues. So that's, step one. And then I think step two, and, and our perspective is a little biased here because we're a digital agency, is building out interesting, compelling, interactive experiences that are backed by good quality creative. I think that we often see clients looking at their competition, so to speak, as other causes. And what we've found is that really the competition is what's the next show that's really hot on Netflix, right? Like, it's really about attention. Mm -hmm. And so if you can craft something in a way that is interesting and compelling and engaging and informative and that inspires action, then suddenly someone, you know, ends up on your site or your digital experience or your newsletter even or whatever it is, and they end up spending a half an hour with your brand and, and engaging when they didn't even mean to necessarily. So you know, as the bar is risen for the quality of content and the, you know, the social feeds just get more and more noisy, then there's more pressure to create experiences and brands that are interesting and compelling and the kind of thing that's going to get people to pay attention. And so that's really the way that I would conceptually be thinking about this. Our approach to this, again, is to do that through digital channels and media that's interesting and compelling. Yeah, no, I, I I couldn't agree more because I do think that uh, that as you said, the social channels get noisier as everything gets noisier in general. Uh, that I think people are looking for for different experiences, ones that stop them in their tracks, as opposed to, you know, just continuing to scroll through and flick through all these different like messages flying at them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but obviously that requires a level of sophistication and really like hard work on, on creating something that's different and also creating content of depth, right? Because here's the other thing is lots of people create content, but there's a huge amount of superficial nonsense out there. Absolutely. And I think, you know, there, you have to figure out what the right cadence and the right mm -hmm. editorial calendar is depending on your situation. But we would rather see less high quality content or, or less content that's high quality yeah. versus more content that's just adding to the noise. Right. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, just having some empathy for your users or your supporters is this something that I would want to see if I were a supporter? Is this something that I would care about if I were a supporter? Or am I just putting content out there because that's what I'm supposed to be doing? Yeah. I mean, that's just a really quick way to kind of to think about it. And then the other way to think about it too, the, the metaphor that I always use is, is a film or a movie. Um, it works best when everything's amazing, of course, but a really good story can make up for bad actors. Um, sure. And then vice mm -hmm. versa, a really great story can be ruined by bad actors. So mm -hmm. elevating all the different components of the content is, is a good way to go. But you know, you don't necessarily need to have super high production value on absolutely everything you do. If the content itself is really good, obviously you wanna to strive to improve that over time. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a good metaphor that, that we always keep in mind when we're thinking about this stuff.
Yeah, and I mean, we've seen that through, um, you know, the popularity of long form podcasting, you know, with totally. people who haven't you know, sometimes started off with very high production values, but because of the, the richness of the content, it keeps people engaged, which runs counter to the pervasive message out there is if you have something longer than two words, it's not going to make an impact. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's funny because we just don't see that in the data. I think long form content is it typically performs better. Um sure. and you know, people might not read the entire article, sure. people might not listen to the entire podcast, but I think that we have a little bit of fatigue of the soundbite media that's mm -hmm. out there right now and that people are looking for authentic in-depth content. Um, so yeah, I absolutely agree. And uh, you know, the production value is only one part of the equation. It's something you should definitely work on. And I think it's about kind of knowing what the right mix is. Um, you know, there's probably a, a kind of feature you could do quarterly that you invest a little bit more time and energy into um, versus the, you know, the blog post or the newsletter or whatever the other content might be that, you know, can still have good, um, you know, concepts or content or ideas in there, but they don't take as long to, to put together. But I do think that one of the concepts that we really try and get our clients to think about is regardless of what their core operations are, they really need to start to develop a digital first culture as a really important part of being a modern organization. And, you know, we want our clients to start to think and act more like a digital media company than a charity, um, because that's how ideas are spread and people are reached and supporters are activated in 2020. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, what's happened this year with the pandemic and that I think all organizations have learned the lessons that if you don't have your digital processes in order, you're going to run into a lot of problems. And the point is that, you know, that digital media is now, you know, so pervasive and it be, has become more important in many ways during this, uh, just this, during this period that you really do need to, to focus on and get that get that going but I, I like your I like what you said there for especially for nonprofits is the idea of becoming more like digital marketing agencies um, because if you're going to compete you're competing yeah you're competing in a in a tough market yeah totally and to speak to the to the COVID bit I mean I think we were going there already right it was indisputable and then that was just an accelerant and all of a sudden the whole world had to go there basically overnight um, and it was really fascinating to watch, um, you know, just on the sidelines or, or really kind of on the front lines in regards to how different organizations are dealing with this. We saw certain clients and um, certain organizations basically go into a state of paralysis. Yeah. And then we saw others get really innovative and figure out how to basically iterate and, mm -hmm. and start to rapidly evolve some of these um, situations. And I don't mean at all to demean the difficult times um, both personally and professionally that a lot of people are going through and, and certain organizations and industries were hit way harder than others. Um, but it's been, you know, it's been really cool to see a, a lot of innovation happen in this time too, that I think, um, you know, we will not be going back to the same version of reality that, um, that was pre-COVID from a professional standpoint or an organizational standpoint or even how change happens. Yeah, no, no, I couldn't agree more. And I think it has been an accelerant, absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, we'll benefit for it the long run. I mean, we could have, it'd be nice if we'd have come about it in a different way, but you, know, you don't get to choose sometimes. Listen, yeah. Eric, this is great. Uh, Eric, a wrestler of Cosmic, a social impact creative agency. All of Eric's information will be in his, uh, his bio below. But Eric, please do tell people a little bit more about your organization and what you do. Yeah, so Cosmic is a social impact creative agency. And so our clients are nonprofits and social enterprises and impact investors and foundations. And if you'd like to learn more about us, designbycosmic.com, we have a bunch of free articles and insights that we publish. So if any of these topics are of interest to you, there's a lot more where that came from. We're also working on publishing a manifesto, which will be dropping sometime in the next couple of weeks that speak a little bit more deeply to this. That will be available um, on our website as a digital experience as well as an audio experience. So um, when that launches, designbycosmic.com, there will be a tab at the top called manifesto. Fantastic. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Thanks, Eric, and I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, John. Nice to have the chat.